Greetings to all my tech heads out there in the Kev Techify Nation. And if you're new here, welcome. In this episode, we're going to look at configuring a DHCP version 6 server. We'll be discussing DHCP version 6 router roles, configuring a stateless DHCP version 6 server and client, configuring a stateful DHCP version 6 server and client. We'll look at DHCP version 6 server verification commands. And finally, we'll look at configuring and verifying the DHCP version 6 relay agent. This episode is part of my series on switching routing and wireless essentials. I'm Kevin here at Kev Techify. Let's get this adventure started. As we talk about a DHCP version 6 server, there's a couple roles that you can configure it as. You can be the server itself, you can be the client, or you can be the real agent. And this, and this applies to the routers. And so once again, the router can be either a server, a client, or a relay agent. Now, to configure a stateless DHCP server, once again, stateless is it's not keeping track of what address, what the last 64 bits of your identifier is, it's not keeping track of that. It's only handing out configuration information. There are five steps to it. There's five steps in configuring your router as a DHCP version six server, specifically a stateless server. First one here is to enable IP version six routing. And once again, if you forgot what the command is to enable that, it is IPv6 and then space, and then it's unicast dash routing. That will turn on IP version six routing on your device. It is not enabled by default. You need to enter that command in. Then next step is you need to define a pool. You define that pool. Now, the, the command is IPv6 DHCP pool, and then you put the pool name. Technically, that doesn't define it. What that command does is, is and I'll write it down right here, IPv6 DHCP pool, and then the name of your pool. What that does is it, it enters into the configuration mode of that pool if that pool doesn't exist it creates it now once again remember this pool name this is case sensitive i know i can't spell but that's case sensitive and so you got to make sure that you have all your capitals and dashes and numbers in the right spot once you're into that pool you can configure the pool with the different options different options like what your DNS server is or what your domain name is. Then once you have your configurations done, you go and you bind that interface to that pool. That's where we go in and we manually change the O flag, the other configuration from a zero to the one. And there, were, there was a IPv6 ND command you had to enter to do that. Once you have those four steps, then you go and you, and you verify that your clients are doing or sorry, your clients are getting an IP version six address and getting the correct ones. And in, in that, if you're having them um, using a randomly generated 64 bit identifier, or if you're using that one that is based off the Mac address. You can set your router up to be a DHCP version six client in a stateless version. Couple steps here to do that. Once again, we enable our routing IPv6 unicast routing. That command enables routing. Once again, not enabled by default. You have to go in and turn it on. Then you have to configure the client router to create a, a LLA, a link local address. So you have to have it assign that. And there, there are several of them, but that's on the interface where you go and you set that up. So it needs an, a link local address on the interface that's going to be the client that's pulling an IP address from your DHCP version six address. 
to set it up to generate that link local address, what you do is on the interface, it is IPv6 enable. And that generates your IP version 6 link local address on that interface. Next step is we have to configure the client to use our stateless address auto configuration. We have to say, okay, this interface, you need to generate your own address. They do that. How you do that, how you tell your router to do that is the command here, IPv6 address, just like you're setting an, a manual address, but then you put auto config at the end. So auto config. Next step is verify that clouder, or sorry, the client router is assigned a global unicast address. Verify that Slack has worked. You can do a show IPv6 interface, and I'd throw brief on there, man, and that will show you that hopefully you do have one. If not, you're gonna have to go back and look at your Slack configuration. And then once we have that, because once again, we're using a stateless DHCP server. So we're gonna use Slack to generate that IP version six address that lasts 64 bits of the identifier. But then we're going to verify that all the other DHCP information's there, your name server, your domain name. Those are the steps you need to configure a stateless DHCP version six client or router. If you like this episode on configuring DHCP version six server and you get value out of it and depending upon what platform you're using, please click that like button, give a five star rating, subscribe to my channel, leave a comment. Doing this supports the channel, which in turn helps me bring you more great content. You can also visit my website at kevtechify.com for all of my details and how to get these episodes in video and podcast form. To configure a stateful DHCP version 6 server on a router, once again, we do have several steps. What this does is it tells the router, or sorry, it tells the host to contact the DHCP version 6 server to obtain all of your IP version 6 addressing information. You're going to get the address from there. You're going to get any configura configuration information from that DHCP version 6 server. That server will then keep track of your address. Keep track of what MAC address you have, what addresses are being used, what addresses are available. There are five steps to set up your router as a stateful DHCP version 6 server. First one, we have to enable IP version 6 routing. That command, once again, is IPv6 unicast dash routing. That turns on IP version 6 on your router. It's not turned on by default. You have to do that. Next step is we have to define a pool for our DHCP version six server to use. Command here once again is IPv6 DHCP pool and then the pool name. Once again, it, you, technically this isn't creating it. This command enters into the pool, but it does a check at the beginning of it. If that pool doesn't exist, it creates it. And so that's, we're assuming there's no pool been created. We're gonna create it when we go into it. And as a friendly reminder, this name right here is case sensitive. So make sure you keep track of your upper lowercase numbers and dashes. Once we have that set up, we configure any options to that pool. Uh, simple options are the address prefix, maybe DNS server, domain name, something like that. Once you have all your configurations done, then we have to take that, we have to figure out what interface we're gonna serve those addresses out of, and we have to bind it to the pool. We go ahead and we bind it. How we go ahead and do that is it's IPv6 DHCP, because we're working with the DHCP server. So DHCP space server. And then our interface, or sorry, not our interface, the pool name. Whatever our pool name is right here. Once again, case sensitive, 
you are in that interface and then you use this command and it binds that pool to that interface. Then you have to also manually uh, make sure your M flag, or sorry, set your M flag to one. That's a IP version six ND command. And then you have to make sure that the A flag, the automatic auto configuration flag, that's set to zero. And that's another IP version six ND command. You have to set that up. Once we have that all configured on our router, we can then go to a host. And then on that host, we can see, are we pulling an IP ad, or sorry, an IP version six address? Are we getting the correct ones with the correct information? To configure your router to be a client for a state full DHCP version six server, almost identical to the state list. We have to enable our IP version six routing. Once again, that command is IPv6 unicast dash routing. Then we have to configure our client router to use a link local address. That link local address, how we configure it, we say IPv6 and then enable. And that will set that up to be a link local address. Next, we have to set the interface on our client router to use DHCP version six. And what we have to do is we have to go into that interface on the router and then issue the command here of IPv6 address, just like you were setting a manual address and then say DHCP. And then I'll say, okay, for your address, contact DHCP server. So you're setting that interface to pull that address in. After that, we go ahead and we verify. Verify we got a correct global unicast address. Go, or sorry, show IP version six interface brief command. That would work for that. And then also verify that the client has all that other DHCP version six information that your stateful DHCP version six server is handing out. On your router, you can verify your DHCP version six server by using the command here, show IP version six DHCP pool. Then it's gonna list out any pools we have. We only have one pool right here, and then I'll list out some other information. Right here is the prefix information. So this is our prefix, our first 64 bits, and then it has a slash 64 at the end to signify that our prefix is only 64 bits long. Over here, we can say that see that we do have two addresses in use. Down here is our DNS information. We're saying this is our DNS server on our network. I get a kick out of this. This kind of mirrors Google's free DNS server. They set it at 888. Google's free DNS service is at 8.8.8.8. I find that quite amusing. We can see that we have any domain name set. And once again, this is used for name resolution. When you go into like Windows Explorer and you type in uh, a server name, server name could be like data storage. You type in data storage, it's going to try to resolve data storage. If it can't resolve that, it'll append the domain name on it. And so it'll if it fails at resolving just the name domain, or sorry, data storage, it's going to try to resolve domain or sorry, data storage.example.com. Hopefully a DNS server has a resolution for that and it just helps you, helps navigating your network. And then the last thing here is we list that we have two active clients. To me, that's the same information that's listed right there. To verify your client got the correct DACP version six information from the server. You're on a router here, you can issue the command here, show IP version six DHCP binding. What this command shows us is the link local address of our client. And then it shows us the, the GUA, the global unicast address that we received from a DHCP server. Because it's a DHCP binding, we know we got it there. But you can also kind of tell here that we have an expiration. We have a lifetime lease of that. 
And so this information says, gives us some DHCP insight on our global unicast address. Same thing down here is we have another interface. This is the link local address. And then down here is our global unicast address. Sometimes there might be a situation where your DHCP version six server is not on the same local network. For whatever the reason is, your DHCP version six server may be on a different network. It could be a stateful or a stateless DHCP version six server. But what we have to do here is get that. Because remember a router, router solicitation stops here again at our router. The router gets it. It's a multicast address, so it stops at our router. But it's seeing that it's looking for a DHCP server. We don't have one on here, but what we can do here is we can set up a DHCP relay. We can look at here and say on the DHCP relay, where are we gonna send that DHCP request? We can send it to our actual DHCP version six server. The command here is IP version six, DHCP relay, and then we want to set the destination to the actual IP address, the global unicast address of our server. And then we do want to say, what interface are we talking about? And that's what the G000 is. Now, to verify this information, uh, the relay agent on the router, we can do two commands here. First one, we can show the IP version six DHCP interface. And the information here is going to say it's in relay mode. So gig 001 is in relay mode. If you look back here, this was the interface we were in gig 000 or sorry, gig 001. That's this interface right here. And go back, go forward a slide. We're saying that that interface is in relay mode. It's going to relay DHCP request or DHCP. And then the second command you can use is show IP version six DHCP binding. But notice this is on the router that's running the server. This is on router three. I go back here, router three is the one running our stateful DHCP version six server. It was my pleasure to provide you with this wonderful episode on configuring DHCP version six server. If you like this episode and you got value out of it, and of course, depending upon what platform you're using, please click that like button, give a five-star rating, leave a comment. This all helps me bring you more great content. Please take a minute to subscribe to my channel. All my socials and contact information are on my website, devtechify.com. You can get all of these episodes in video and podcast form. In the upper right is my playlist for my series on switching, routing, and wireless essentials. In the bottom right is one of my favorite videos that I linked just for you. Thank you so much for watching this episode of my series on switching, routing, and wireless essentials. Once again, I'm Kevin. This is Kev Techify. I'll see you next time for another great adventure.